you know what you see in the upper left hand corner here is your magnetic heading 075 that's what we should be flying currently our track which is our green extension line off the nose here is at 175 so it's always as easy as flying to the triangle so in this case a turn to the left which is pretty clear to see on the main screen as well you can also see we've triggered a terrain alert we have tower alerts as well and if you get within eight minutes and 500 feet of either a terrain or towers you will get this alert and you will get this red frame flashing around on the movie map screen now in the case of towers if you trigger a tower alert they will physically appear on the screen in red as well below that is your next waypoint or in this case our destination and below that we've got our range ground speed and estimated time and route a lot of systems out there just divide your ground speed into the distance but of course very often you're not going straight you may be going around airspace or something else so that's why we measure on your actual closure rate. So what you'd find is if you're a few degrees off, let's just go to another airport here, it's going to give you a slightly different time until you are exactly lined up. Directly below that is our altitude, our GPS altitude. And what you do is if you want to see different information. Right now we just have state borders on here. Just tap in the lower right hand corner and that brings up your menu and then tap this map button. And every time you tap this map button you're going to get different layers of NAVA data. Now of course you can customize these for specifically the way you want to view it. Now the other thing is if you want to change the range go in the upper right hand corner here if you tap on the left hand side you bring the range in and when we say 50 miles that's from the aircraft to this compass ring here and if you tap on the right hand side it's going to bring your range back out another thing you can do while you're flying if you tap on a particular airspace it'll give you the altitudes of an airspace if you tap on a particular airport and select direct to it'll take you directly to that airport Not only do you have control over the range with the left and right clicks up at the range indicator here, but in addition, if you want to display live weather, you just hit the enter button. In the upper left hand corner, it'll tell you what weather product you're looking at. In this case, it's NEXRAD and it's four minutes old. Hit again, that would be CV for ceilings visibilities for METARs, the winds on the ground, temperature dew point spreads lightning strikes, echo tops, winds aloft, infrared satellite imagery. And if you hit the enter button again, you have one blank page. So basically, just a, a sort of a quick review, this changes your range in and out. You want to quickly pull up a different layer of navigational information. It's right on the screen here. Hit enter, and that brings up the weather. So you have any combination of range, navigational information, and weather by pulling those up very quickly. Now, of course, there's a lot of other features as far as maps and different terrain backgrounds, and we'll get into that more in a minute. The way the satellite status indicators work is it'll be in one of three colors for the GPS and the XM receiver. Green, of course, means go and everything's working just fine. But for instance, if you see GPS with a yellow background, that means the GPS antenna is working fine. It's just that it's not receiving enough satellites to have a lock. Same would be true with XM. If you saw yellow, uh, the, the receiver would be working fine. But the problem would be that you don't have a strong enough satellite signal. The other indicator is if it turns red, in this case with the GPS, that means it's treating it like it's physically disconnected from the hardware itself. So you have three colors for either of these indicators. Red means a hardware disconnection. Yellow means it's working fine, but it cannot receive enough satellites to have a proper signal. 
and green means everything is fine. We also have terrain and tower alerts. As you can see in this upper left hand corner, that's telling you that you're within eight minutes and 500 feet of terrain. There would be a different symbol here on the other side if it was for towers. You also have this red frame flashing around the screen to alert you as well. Now, of course, we're just looking at a black background here, but you do have a lot of other options in here. Just hit the nav key, go into terrain, and you can turn the terrain alert on. That's one option. Another option is you can actually turn on the background map. Or you can turn on both of them simultaneously, like this. With this different background, of course, the same still holds true, where if you hit the map key, you display different navigational information over the top of it here. Or you can pull up weather, live weather on top of it. In addition, of course, you can display whatever navigational information you want to see on the screen right now. You can go in here and you can change the terrain background. All these things are independent of each other. So you can have your terrain alert on here. You can have both of them. Another option is you can go in here and this will show you all the charts you're flying over right now. So for instance, that's the VFR terminal chart around the Class B airspace. You do have the option where you can make this as big or as small as you want. You just grab the map here. You can move it around if you want to look at a particular area. Let's say you move off to one section and you sort of lost the plane. Just double tap the Enter button and it'll center the plane again. To get out of the screen, tap in the upper left hand corner where that X is. Of course, you've also got a lot of other choices too, not just the VFR terminals and your sectionals, but the high and low altitude and route charts as well. Once again, tap in the upper left hand corner and you're on the main screen again. You of course have another mapping option as well. Just go in here and select 3D settings. You can turn the 3D terrain on. Just remember though, all these settings are independent of each other so you can get any combination of what we've been looking at here. We have another background map as well. And let's say you're flying IFR or you're flying at night and you had an engine problem and you could just not make it to the closest airport. In that case, what you can do is go back into the nav menu under terrain and we have satellite imagery. What this will do is it'll show you the actual fields, trees and buildings below you so you can have a better idea of what areas to head for. You can see the roads here, and you can see these little areas, these neighborhoods. So clearly, this area right here would be a good place to land. But it's really helpful in giving you a good idea of what's around you in case you do have to land in an emergency. And it, it will show you more than enough detail as far as large enough areas to do a safe landing.